Hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on Slime Lens, we're gonna take a look at what are really the three mirrorless versions of crossover cameras out there that I think become cinematic cameras. I think these are definitely the top three contenders in terms of video capabilities for mirrorless cameras. If you don't want to jump straight into that cinema world and you still need to take photos, I think these are the ones you're gonna be looking at. And obviously we've been waiting a long time. I think everybody's done a review of the R5 by now and the A7S III. Um, of course, the Panasonic S1H is kind of old news, but we wanted to get all three of them in hand and test them head to head. I don't know, what spec-wise, how do these line up with each other? You know, it's funny, we were just talking about this, how these are all kind of the best in their field, but they're also very different. Yeah. You know, with the R5, you have really cool photo capabilities, but on the video side, you're dealing with some overheating and the, the 8K versus 4K and what do you shoot on. Panasonic is really good in terms of shooting 6K or 4K. It has acceptable photo capabilities, but the autofocus is only so-so. And then the Sony, I mean, amazing video capabilities, but it's only 12 megapixels. The problem with these bodies, and we've talked about this already, is they're small bodies, they're not designed, to let off heat very quickly. Anyways, lots of trade-offs, lots of differences. We're gonna look at picture quality, dynamic range. We're gonna do an ISO test. We're gonna do a mixed lighting test. We're gonna shoot a couple different modes on the Canon here at the beginning, just to show you the RAW versus the 422 versus the 8K, 4K. Yeah. Um, but I think for the most part, we're gonna spend most of the day shooting 4K, 10-bit across all these cameras because if I was going to shoot a professional project on any of these, it's most likely that I would be using a 422 10-bit 4K codec. That's just me. And that's what makes these three cameras into cinema cameras, is a 10-bit 422 codec. I mean, yeah. that really, if you don't have that, you really fall too short. 8-bit's not gonna cut it. This will cut together with uh, just about any cinema camera out there, and that's the way people are using it. They've been using the Panasonic for a long time. People gravitated to that almost immediately because of the 10-bit the 422. So let's take a look at these three cameras and let's see what we got. Okay, let's talk about the ergonomics of these cameras. You can start with your beast, the Panasonic. Yeah, the Panasonic is really big. It's definitely the, the biggest and the heaviest. There is an advantage here and that is they've been able to fit a fan here behind the screen. So it's able to get rid of all the heat that sometimes the, the Canon, obviously, sometimes even the Sony has, has a hard time dealing with. Ergonomically, we've talked about this in, in previous reviews. It's a great camera, feels nice in the hands, plenty of things to grab, especially if you have big hands, you'll like something like this. And for video, it's not such a bad thing to have a big camera. It helps take out some of the shake. Yeah, yeah. It's, gonna, it's gonna sit well, in your hands after, better. Yeah. yeah. I like the new Canon, what do you think? Oh, the, the new Canon's fabulous because there's room for all my fingers on the grip. I, I have a place for everything on there. I feel like I can hold it. I love the joystick. I'm glad that joystick is back. I'm glad that little slider thing is gone. So, but even still though, we have a mirrorless camera and we got a great big lens on here, you yeah. know? So the yeah. Tamron lenses for the Sony make a lot of sense. I hope to see, you know, something like that. that uh, more nice. compact uh, uh, mirrorless lenses, I think. I do love the fact that we still have this the top screen. The yeah. top screen is nice. And yeah, a, I guess that is, the Sony is the only one here that doesn't have a top screen. Yep. The top screen is nice sometimes. I do like this new Sony. I love the flip out screen. I'm so glad they've implemented that now. It's a little short. My, it's a my little pinky dangles off a, a little, little bit. Short, a little short, yep. But the grip feels really good. The size of the grip is really nice. I think the menus are much easier oh, to navigate. Yeah. They're the just, menus. they're more like Nikons and I think as, if they stay in this direction, you get used to that menu system, I think you'll like it a lot. All right, there's a look at the ergonomics. I mean, very similar. Well, these two are more similar than that one. <laughs> yeah, <that's true. laughs> so, so, all right, let's, uh, let's move on. So I brought this 8K RAW footage into DaVinci Resolve. It was interpreted as C-Log2, and then I used the manufacturer LUT to transform it into Rec. 709. That may account for the really crunchy highlights on my forehead and the leaves above, and then the little white square on the spider checker chart. I don't think, and even my shoulder is clipping a little bit. It is. Those don't have to be. C-Log 2 is very flat, and so this is a little overcrunched, but overall, it looks nice. Now, we also did 8K 10-bit. That's shot in C-Log 1, because that's all the camera has in terms of log right now, and you can see it. A lot of color detail is lost. Everything seems kind of mushy and monotone in a very way. Very much so, almost like there's a gray veil over everything. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have... The 4K, about, it looks very similar. There is a little bit of a loss of detail compared to the 8K, but the color really looks the same to me. 
We also shot the 4K line skipped. To my eye, even without really zooming in or anything, I can just see the loss of detail already. Oh, absolutely. To the other 4K. I can't read the data color logo very well. Uh, it's real smushy. It's yeah. real smushy. Yeah. yeah. I do feel like the colors are a little, a little more yellow. I mean, that's what we expect from Sony. They're going to be a little more on the yellow, warm side. It really is. It's a nice image. We see great detail in the logos. Yeah. And finally, let's look at the Panasonic. This one actually surprised me because it looks super mushy. And I did not expect that because this Panasonic we shot in full frame, but it is 4K. We didn't shoot 6K because we wanted to do the 10-bit codec. But it compares to me to the line skipped version of the Canon. So now we're going to do an autofocus test in video mode. I expect the Canon to perform the best here. Their dual pixel autofocus has always been the best and it's even better this time around. Uh, let's start with the Canon here. It is snappy. It is really fast. I was impressed with the fact that the Canon was picking up the back of my head. As you're walking As you're walking frame. away. So I come into the frame, never introduced my face, and I walked away, and the Canon was picked up on the back of my head, crossed the tree, and it just kept following. So I thought that was pretty impressive. The Sony does really good. I was surprised because I've always heard Canon is the is the bomb when it comes to uh, focus and follow focus and in video mode, but the Sony is it's doing is every it's bit as good. At least as good, if not maybe even better. Yeah, the Panasonic struggled so badly with the autofocus. It's just it's just not, really it not its thing. Figures, oh, it's like oh wait, there's a person. The the Panasonic is you have to tell it what to track. It won't pick you up automatically. So now we're going to test dynamic range. And the way we're doing that these days is we'll have JP sitting here at the table with a window light on his face. The shadow side of JP's face is like a two, and then the brightest side of his face is like a five, six. And that's not including the darker and brighter sides of the image. Let's start with the Sony. I don't know why I want to start with the okay. Sony all, all right. of a sudden. The Sony, it's holding the outside nicely. That S-Log3 is super flat. And it's able to hold the outside, it's able to hold the inside. I'm going to say I'm not in love with your skin tone. But again, this is a manufacturer's LUT. To be honest, manufacturer LUTs are never the best. But you do have the range, and the color checker chart does look nice. And then if we look at the Panasonic, this is a manufacturer LUT. It actually doesn't look too bad. I like the skin tone. It's pretty neutral. Color overall is a bit more subdued, which really, could be fun. You could, you could bring up that saturation if you yeah, wanted to. We're looking at the spider checker, it's... Uh... Compared to the Sony, it's just not popping. It's no, much. not at all. But it feels overall a little down. And then we have the 8K RAW which looks really nice. Again, a little crispy on the highlights, and there's a ton of detail there, of course, because it's 8K. Starting with the Sony at plus one, I feel like the well, color the color's is shifting. starting to shift yeah. really weird on your skin. Very yellow. Uh... Which is odd, because your skin is not really overexposed, even on the mm -hmm. shadow side right now. Panasonic looks pretty good. We're not still losing... Still a little underexposed to me, it seems On the like. face, yeah. 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 The outside is still holding for both of those yep. cameras at plus one stops. It's even holding for the Canon at plus one stop. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I mean, they're all looking about the same as they did. Plus two stops. Boy, look at that. The Sony is starting to blow out in the window back mm -hmm. there. But how about, is it, are all the others blowing out as well? A little um, bit. About the same, a blowing out. A Panasonic. Panasonic. The Canon's oh. definitely starting to blow out. Wow, yeah. it's really blown out. Yeah. But the color shifted on the Sony. Panasonic's kind of winning out on the overexposure. I, I think so. It's at two stops overexposed. The Panasonic is certainly holding the highlights better. The shadows are better. And the color yeah. hasn't shifted as much. Plus three stops here. Sony is not looking super great. I I mean, we're blowing out well, the window, Anything feel looking super great at plus yeah. three. We're blowing out to the same degree on the Sony and the Panasonic, we but are. the color is holding much better with the Panasonic. Uh, the Panasonic it really is. much shift. It's a, yeah, the color rendition is much better here. Uh, it's not shifting. Oh, my word, the Canon the is Canon's in trouble. The just going nuclear. Yeah. So minus one stop. Here's a Sony. Whoa. It's looking a little chunky. Yeah, a little bit. Even it's at minus got one stop. Major Your contrast face. starting to, to build. Panasonic also getting a lot of contrast. It the, is. The color isn't shifting as much, but it is going a little green. The Canon is shifting kind of blue, which is interesting. The Panasonic is the closest to the it's real the color in the room. The real color. Yep. Interesting. Absolutely. That's huh. the green that's on that wall. Interesting. The other two are not even close. Minus two stops on the Sony. It's kind of doing what it did before, but it's just a lot more noisy. The Panasonic, the, it's getting really crunched now too, and the cut, like your skin tone is going really red. Really orange. red, yep. Really red. Minus two stops on the Canon. Losing a lot of color, color information, and it's getting a lot more noisy. It's really flat here the, all of a sudden. The shadows, I, I This looks like the log in, ungraded. In grading this, I had a hard time getting the, the blacks to be black without crushing the rest of the image. Holy oh, cow. Minus three stops <laughs> on the Sony. Really Sony's bad. in a snowstorm. 
It's not doing great. The Panasonic here covers is, all over. The colors all over. It's not as noisy. No, but you are not seeing as noisy. It, and the color is just terrible. The skin's super ruddy. The Canon. Oh, <laughs> it's in a very snowstorm noisy. too. There's still a lot of clarity there. I mean, that 8K does make a difference, but well, yeah, it certainly does. It's, but... it's very noisy. Minus three stops. So let's take a look at the ISO test here. We've done this in several different ways, but today we used mixed light. We've got the sunlight coming in, and we've got a tungsten balanced light on our model, mm -hmm. which it's is just an overhead. Up yep, we want something up. darker. I feel like yep. we've been doing really high key stuff for the ISO test. I want to do something a little more moody. Let's go to 2500 ISO. So here's the Sony with PP8, that's S Log 3. It is already really noisy. Very noisy. And this is the, the low light king, right? Yeah, look over, yeah, and it's very noisy. Now let's look at it with PP1, which is a baked gamma. That's just like a Rec. 709 bacon. And it looks really oh, clean. Oh my word, it looks, it looks really, really nice. clean. Yeah. What a difference. You don't see that dancing grain. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just so much better. Now the reason why that happens is because when you're shooting PP8, what the camera is doing is it's actually kind of underexposing your footage so that it can protect those highlights that would normally blow out. And then it's gonna push the shadows up so that you still have all your shadow detail too. Basically what it comes down to is if you're shooting the Sony in low light situations, you're gonna be better not shooting log. Yes. You don't even have to shoot PP1. There is Cine4 on there. You can shoot PP4. That's a great profile. It's a little flatter, so you have more forgiveness and your, your lamps and your lights and fire and stuff isn't gonna blow out as fast. That's probably what I would do if I was using this camera. But the PP4? PP4. Yeah. Going to 1250 ISO, you are starting to see a little bit of noise with the Canon in her shirt. You see it in this shirt here. It's got a moiré thing going on in the uh, kind of the see-through uh, part of the top. With the Panasonic, it's actually looking pretty clean. And then with the Sony, I don't Super see clean, it. but also a, at least a half a stop dark compared yeah. to the others. 2500 ISO. I feel like we are losing a little bit of detail in her face uh -huh. with the Canon. Uh, the Panasonic, wow. Whoa. Not looking good. It's Very super crunchy. Super green. And then the Sony. It's much better. I mean, much it's better. so, so nice. You still see a, a smooth gradation between mm -hmm. the highlights and the shadows. The Canon, you're definitely seeing it 5000 ISO. And her skin is turning kind of green. Look at the checker chart, the black around the checker chart green, the Panasonic. So, I mean, it's looking, her face is a little bit warm and the color check is a little green, but it looks better than it did at 2400. Yeah, that's, or probably, 2500. that's probably because of the dual ISO. Um, and, and then the Sony. The Sony. Amazingly clean. Yeah. And the color, look at the blacks on the spider checker. Look just at the blacks. Real black. just, yeah. And we're getting nice white, we're getting nice colors. 10,000 ISO, I wouldn't expect much. So it doesn't surprise me that the Canon looks pretty unusable. The Panasonic, Panasonic. I mean, the color looks kind of okay, but it is very noisy. Yeah. It reminds me of kind of Super 8 film or something yeah. like that. The Sony is starting to feel mushy. Like, I feel like I'm losing detail in her face and things. In the deeper shadows, but yeah. the white... Uh, the white looks good. White looks good. And there's still not much noise, though no. you are starting to kind of see it. 10,000. 10, ISO. 20,000 ISO, and then we'll stop. So the Canon, of course, looks like... Holy cow. Not very great. Yep, falling off the cliff. The Panasonic... Panasonic fell off the same cliff. Not looking very great. <laughs> And then the Sony, which is looking mushier. It is mushier, but that they're trying to hold that detail and the way they're doing that yeah. is they're mushing the image a little bit. Yeah. Let's look at the Panasonic at 2500 ISO versus the Sony in S-Log3 at 2500 ISO. Both of these cameras are exposed exactly the same with the same camera settings and lenses and everything. Look at how much less noisy the Panasonic is compared to the Sony. Boy, it sure is. The Panasonic does have a stronger log profile, but if you're not shooting log, the Sony will beat you out. We decided to set up a test. Um, and I had some suspicions about the Sony too. So we set up a test outside in the sun with all three cameras direct in sun. direct sun. 90 degrees. Na yeah, it was like 90, 95 degrees, yeah. 92 degrees. First of all, the Panasonic filled up the card. It could have gone It longer. would have been going forever. Yeah. But it's got a fan in it, so that doesn't surprise me at all. But it could have kept recording forever. Yeah. Exactly. The Canon overheated at about 21 minutes. The Sony A7S III stopped at 18 minutes. So now a follow up to that, I set them up in, inside and ran them and the Canon overheated at about 28-ish minutes. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was done. When I turned it off, tried to re-roll it again, it wasn't going to happen. And that's the thing about the Canon. The yeah. Sony will cool off for a couple minutes and then you can roll again. Yeah. But the Sony inside, you turn it on and it would have ran for... It would have ran forever. Forever. So when it comes to overheating, the Sony is certainly a much better camera than mm -hmm. the, the R5 and the Panasonic wins da hands, yeah, down. hands down. And, it's gonna run forever, inside, <laughs> outside, sun or no sun. 
So there you have it. There's so much back and forth, push and pull, but I don't think the Canon really performed the way I'd hoped it for. I think uh, the Sony performed the way you expected it yeah. to with great ISO capabilities. I think the Panasonic, just large camera, but yeah. really a sturdy go-to camera in, a lot of, in most situations. It, All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we gave, got something out of it. Give us some comments. We'd love to hear what you think. Um, I'm sure you're going to have thoughts on this and your feelings about it and the way you interpreted the test because everyone looks at this from a little different point of view. The reality is with all these cameras is that uh, what you do specifically and your workflow has a lot to do with which camera you're going to purchase. So it depends on what you're doing. Leave us some comments. Uh, make sure you follow us here on the Slam Lens and keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking. <laughs>